Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Amy Astley, Head of Communications for Walt Disney Animation Studios, and it is my honor to welcome you to the Raya and the Last Dragon press junket and this very special press conference for Walt Disney Animation Studios' first theatrical short in five years, us again. Set in a vibrant city pulsating with rhythm and movement, an elderly man and his young at heart wife rekindle their youthful zeal for life and one another on one magical night. The years fade away as the joy of dancing propels them across the exciting landscape of their youth and revives fond memories and ambitions. Us Again debuts in theaters March 5th with Ryan the Last Dragon and then on Disney Plus in June. Uh, please welcome our panelists for today and remember to place your questions in the Q&A function at the bottom of your screen as we will try to get as many of your questions as we can. Our first two panelists are incredible choreographers and dancers who have been featured on series including World of Dance, Dancing with the Stars, So You Think You Can Dance, many others. They've collaborated with artists such as Justin Bieber and Billie Eilish. And please welcome this couple who's both a couple on the dance floor and a couple in life, Keone and Mari. And you can turn, there they are. Hello, Hi, everybody. Keone and Mari. How are you today? Good, how are thank you? Great. So thank you so much for being here with us today. Uh, us Again producer Brad Simonson uh, has served as associate producer on Ralph Breaks the Internet, an Oscar-winning film Zootopia and Big Hero 6. Please welcome Brad. Hi, everybody. Good to see you, Brad. Director Zach Parrish has been an animator with Disney Animation for 11 years. He was head of animation on the Oscar-winning Big Hero 6, and he was director of the short circuit film Puddles. He has a thing about water, I've noticed. Uh, it's brilliant. Uh, please welcome director Zach Parrish. Hi, everybody. <laughs> so Zach, let's start off with you and tell us about the origin of this short. Sure. Um, when I was coming up with ideas, we, we pitched four ideas actually in the development process. But this idea in particular came from a time in my life when I was uh, kind of struggling with the changes that go along with aging. I was kind of, you know, bemoaning my aging body. I'm not a, not a super old person, but I was starting to recognize those changes in myself. And I was, it kind of led me to these conversations that I would have with my mom, where she would always talk about all the great things that she was going to do when she grew up. And it really made me stop and realize that, um, I kind of had my priorities wrong. I was looking in the wrong direction. And, and if I'm always looking in the past, then I'm going to miss the beauty in the now. And I'm, I'm old by my own definition and she's young by hers. And so that idea of youth being a state of mind um, really got my gears turning. And I really thought it'd be fun to do a, a fountain of youth story. Amazing. And the music for this short is so incredible. Brad, can you tell us about the score for this? Absolutely. Uh, yeah, we were, um, as we started the process, Zach knew that the foundation of this had to be the music. Uh, choreography and music were the foundation of the short. Um, and Tom McDougall, who is a uh, head of music uh, at Disney Animation, brought in Pinar Toprak, who did Captain Marvel. She did the score. What we didn't know it at the time is that actually, uh, although Pinar is amazing at doing scores, she loves funk. So uh, the vision for this was always to have a funk soul, old and now um, feeling, and she brought it. And uh, she was such an incredible collaborator. It's wonderful. And you're right, combined with this beautiful music is the beautiful dance we see in this. Keone and Mari, when did you first join the project? And what was it about joining a Disney animation project that was special for you? Uh, well, I believe we came in, uh, in a, around April-ish, I could be wrong, <laughs> April of uh, 2019. I remember because I think I was about six months pregnant <laughs> on our first meeting when we came in. Um, and I mean, it's just been like a dream. It, oh, there's the baby that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, we have one extra panelist today. That you yes, yes. <laughs> um, yeah. It, it's really like a, a dream and still surreal that we got to work with Disney animation. We are huge Disney fans. We've been since we were kids. I mean, um, yeah, I, I, I keep saying it, but like I still am pitching myself. I can't wait to be able to like see the short and see people enjoy it and yeah. 
So we have a lot of questions from our audience and thank you guys for sending these in. Don't forget to put them in the Q&A if you can. Um, Alex from Laughing Place, hi Alex, uh, was wondering if you looked at any silent films uh, or interpretive dance choreographers, hello Keone and Mari, uh, for inspiration to convey the story of this short with no dialogue. Zach, do you kind of want to Talk about what drew you to Keone and Mari, and then Keone and Mari, if you can talk about your inspirations, that would be great. Yeah, it's a it's a great question. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we looked at all kinds of reference. You know, I'm a huge I'm a huge animation nerd. I'm a huge film nerd, and so we looked at all all kinds of reference. And there's there's a long history at Disney um, of of using dance as a medium to 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 express story, you know, going back to, to Mickey shorts and things like that. Um, we even got to attend an event uh, at the Academy Theater um, that was about eccentric dance and animation and, and, and their intersection. And so uh, we got, we looked at a lot of that stuff. I also looked at a lot of Fantasia reference because it's amazing the storytelling that they did in those short films without dialogue, driven mostly by music and movement. And so, uh, as I was thinking of this idea for the film and knowing that I wanted to do the entire thing through dance, it, uh, to, to Amy's question, it, it really sparked this memory of, of this video that I saw of this incredible couple uh, online. Um, I believe they were teaching um, at the time. Uh, and uh, it was to Bob Marley's Is This Love? This Is Love? And, and it, they were dancing as an old couple. And it was, it was perfect because as an animator, I'm... I'm very familiar with with pose to pose animation and uh, their style of dance had this like perfect animation ness to it. Um, mm -hmm. But also they have this incredible ability to tell stories with the way that they dance and all dances is storytelling, but theirs was so deep and so emotional and the connection between them was so visceral that it felt it felt perfect for this film. And so from the very beginning, even when I was pitching the idea of the short, I was actually using uh, examples of Keone and Mari as like, this is what I would love for it to look like if somebody can do this, um, never thinking that it would actually be Keone and Mari who, who would get to bring it to life. Yeah, Keone and Mari, talk about your beautiful style of dance and your inspirations. Yeah, well, for us, um, Obviously, we, we've been dancing for so long and choreographing, but one thing that we're so passionate about is story. And just the, the marriage of the project was just instantaneous as soon as we you know, heard what the ideas were. Um, and we've been trying to tell stories through dance our entire careers. And um, you know, we find that that's where Disney's power in, in animation or in storytelling is, is in, with animation. We feel like our power in um, and storytelling is our dance style and, you know, developing the characters and finding out how they would move and um, all of those things were so important to us. We're usually projects that are like, okay, just choreograph to the set of music and then, you know, give it to the artist and that's it. But we, we usually don't get to use the other half of what we love to do, which is tell stories. So this was, again, just can't emphasize how much of a dream project this was. It's amazing. Um, Tati from Cool Moms uh, asked this great question. It's a beautiful short that tugged at my emotions. What did you hope is the takeaway from this short for people uh, who, and that question just disappeared from my q and I apologize, but what do you hope audiences take away from this? I think the, the idea for this short was always, it, it's something that I struggle with and it, it, it shows up a little bit in Puddles, my previous short, but it's about taking, taking that time to focus on what's truly important and, and what's around you and what makes your life beautiful. Um, I think, you know, many, many people think that it's, it's about being okay with, with aging and, and, and sure that's a part of it too. But I think the, the core of the idea is less about, is less about age um, and it's more about any age, not focusing on things that are, that are holding you back, not focusing on the past, not focusing on, on anything that's distracting you from the beauty that is, that is the world around you. And so that, and appreciating those who are on that journey with you and make your life beautiful. And so that's, that's really where, where Dot's character really comes into play is that she's encouraging Art to see that, but she's also that person who carries so much of the beauty of his world for him. And so hope, hopefully all ages can, can take that away. And if nothing else, they just love, love to dance. 
Wonderful. We have a question from Maximilian from Allocine, who I think we saw yesterday at the Raya French Junket. Uh, hello again. How much were Keone and Mari's choreographies important in the writing process? Because dance is both at the heart and is the language of the short. <laughs> yeah, you kind of hit the uh, the chicken and egg problem that we had with this <laughs> with this film. We we kind of had a, a turducken, if you will, because we. Uh, we had to we had to have the music to brad's point we had to have the music in order to inspire the dance we had to have the story to inspire the dance but we needed the dance to inspire the story and so it it really came around like that so that's why uh you know brad brad was smart enough to, to reach out to keone and mari as early on in the process as, as we did because we met with them in april and at that point we were we were pretty pretty loose um as far as what the story was we were first pass of storyboards and so we really wanted them to be partners with us all along the way, as far as where can we go and where can we not go, which their answer was pretty much, you can go anywhere um, because they're incredible, but, um, but specifically getting them into the characters and understanding um, what level of emotion we're gonna be able to go to and what types of story we're gonna be able to tell, um, which, which was amazing to have like their level of partnership throughout the entire process. That's great. Um, Sam from CBR asks, how did you develop the design for the couple themselves, both kinetically and how they move? Uh, and you can certainly talk to the animation uh, and, and the choice of movements that you have there and the inspiration for Keone and Mari, and in terms of physical appearance. Sure, yeah. I mean, we, we knew from the beginning that we wanted uh, an interracial couple. Um, I'm in an interracial relationship, and so from the beginning, um, and so is Brad, that's right. Um, and so from the beginning, we knew we wanted um, to represent an interracial couple on screen. Um, and we had some amazing uh, character designers who came on and we did, we met with, we have an amazing group of people, artists and other employees within the building uh, whose focus is on diversity and inclusion. And we met with them um, both in the design stage and actually all the way through the process um, of making the film. Um, but uh, we had some incredible character designers who came in and started to flesh out the style of the show. I wanted something that felt um, similar but different to our, to our Disney style. And I wanted something that felt slightly miniature. I wanted something that was a little bit simpler in the design, um, a little bit less anatomy, things of that sort. And so we kind of gave that uh, freedom to the character designers and they came back with all kinds of amazing designs. Um, and, and Art and Dot's final design really came down to kind of an amalgamation of, of a lot of different designs um, that our, our lead modeler really brought, really brought to life and really tried to encapsulate their, their personalities and, um, and, and also their ethnicities. Uh, Laura Silkiel, and hi Laura again, it's good to see you. Uh, Keone and Mari, how connected did you feel to the characters, especially since you're both also a beautiful dancing couple? Oh, I mean, greatly. I, I think, um, you know, in a way, we, I'm sorry, that's our one year old. <laughs> she wants to answer the question. Um, but no, I think just being a married couple, you know, we can relate ourselves to, to you know, what they're going through, not in the sense that we're old. Um, oh. Sorry. We can come back to you if you want. Thank Absolutely. You. Priorities, priorities for sure. <laughs> no, I think she's getting, she just wanted to play with her toy. If you don't mind there being some sounds in the background. But anyways, that, we've all been I think, there. <laughs> I think, you know, just, you know, even the dichotomy of like, of art not wanting to participate in the things that are happening around him. You know, I think that sometimes as people who are in the dance world, we can kind of, you know, scoff at the things of like, I don't want to participate in, you know, those young dance events or, or these things or whatever, because I've been in this for so long or you, you reach a certain age. And I think there's a relatability to that and coming back to what you love and not relying upon the, you know, the, the age or, or where you're at in your life to, to be in love with what's around you and being present. And that's in the message that Zach was talking about. But I think to that level and then also of course the the couple level yeah yeah and then honestly i have to say that when we came in and we saw it was an interracial couple that was so we were so happy and excited to see that we're both children of interracial couples so that was really meaningful too um and also just like obviously 
marriage and trying to be in the shoes and imagine having a marriage that long and a life that long with somebody, um, you know, and all the things like the comfort you have <laughs> with somebody and also the like impatience you'll have with somebody and, um, you know, and, and that it's such a special moment that they find together of like reconnection. And that's so, I think that I would imagine happens over a marriage over and over and over at different points. And so uh, really trying to connect to them, um, you know, was really awesome. Yeah. There's a, there's a very special moment that as I hear Mari talk about, which is a, a video, Brad, that you showed me of the first time Keone and Mari were seeing it wasn't the final version, but it's pretty close to the final. Maybe you guys, whomever can kind of talk about these moments of where you really getting to see that what you hoped it would be is, is coming to fruition. Brad, you want to talk about that video or maybe oh, it's sure, hard sorry, to yeah. talk about. Um, <laughs> yeah, we, you know, from the very beginnings when Zach showed me the video uh, of them dancing, um, I really said, well, why don't we just bring them in? Like, let's, let's make a phone call and see if they'll come in and talk to us. Um, and then they did, and we were super excited. And we brought them into the story room. We work in story rooms that have all the art up on it. So we had all kinds of inspirational art that Zach had been collecting uh, for months. And we work in a way where we board and we look at um, kind of the design, the inspiration, and, and we try, try to create a feeling in the room, right? That room is kind of a holy place that we go to and, and work and, and build up the inspiration. And we brought them in um, and, sh and they walked in and looked at the room and then they sat down and uh, the designs weren't finalized at that time. And then Zach pitched them through a deck that he had. And they, I mean, I could kind of tell we hadn't made a deal yet. <laughs> I, I could kind of tell they were in, like it was like, there was a connection from the beginning that I could really see happening. And then we did, it was a, you know, it was a moment that we really, um, we kind of decided, hey, let's try to take them on this process. Like let's, uh, and from the beginning, we wanted to involve them as much as we could. Um, so they came in several times and we looked at the characters together. We showed them different versions of the movie because as we work, we actually have different versions of the movie before it's finalized. Um, and they were absolute partners, you know, and I was texting, you know, Keone is, and Mari as things were going on and asking their opinion on things and could this work, could that work? Uh, and then we got into the design, the sound design um, and score. Uh, and like Zach said, there was this chicken and egg problem where we were trying to do the score with Pinar. Normally you wait and do the score at the end of the movie and you have temp music in, but we knew that we needed the actual score. so. Pinar was challenged to make the music for the, make a song for the movie without really having the movie yet. She had a very rough pass of what was not the final movie and she was creating that. And then we were working to that and ultimately got that to Keone and Mari for choreography. We were sharing along the way to make sure we were all on the same path. Um, but once they, got, once they got the final music and had boards, it actually went really fast because we had been working uh, for so long together. It was amazing. And I think that really, that really does kind of speak, speak to kind of these like little, little peaks throughout the process of like, oh, I think this might work. Cause again, in that, in that chicken and egg thing, we, you know, we would, we would meet with Keone and Mari and we would talk about the dance and the story would get a little bit better. And then the music would start to come together. And, and so with each one of those phases, I think it's like, I think this is going to work because the whole thing felt a little bit experimental because you didn't, you never had the final thing all together. Um, and then, then when we got to a place where animation was mostly complete um, and the, the music was, was temp as far as the instruments, but final as far as uh, the actual arrangement, uh, we got to share with, with Keone and Mari and actually got to, they got to see what their dance looks like on our characters through animation didn't have lighting and all of the the fanciness on it yet um but just to kind of see how our characters could uh our hope encapsulate their their dance and their personalities and everything as, as much as possible 
Yeah, I, um, again, had the privilege of seeing that video and the motion on your faces, Keone and Mari, as you are watching the animation. Just one of those special moments in this very iterative back and forth process to see how it was touching you. Oh, we were crying at opening credits. So, you know, it didn't take much. As soon as we saw the Mickey animation, we're like, oh my God, we made one of these, what the heck? Um, no, but to truly see, you know, it was one thing to, you know, create the dance and, and, and all, this, all this stuff, but to, it, it's like seeing two of your, your students, uh, your dance students, just like take your choreography to another level. Like there's you know, a, a feeling of that watching it too, because, you know, Art and Dot truly are their own people and their own expressions, their own mannerisms and all the things. And that's where, you know, the magic of the animators came in to take our choreography to another level. And that was just, you know, just so amazing, you know, to, to see, uh, you know, we we're a little worried, like would, would our choreography, would our dance style work in animation? And to have that confirmation uh, was definitely overwhelming emotionally, <laughs> um, as well as the story being, you yeah. know, powerful. Yeah, and then the, just the, we're very deep, detail oriented yeah. in our choreography, like really nitpicky detail oriented people. And uh, the animators just did such a beautiful job of paying attention to all those things and capturing them. And uh, it was just, yeah, beautiful, beautiful to see it and, and an honor and, and very overwhelming. <laughs> I, I, would, I would just jump in to say that when, because uh, Keone Amari did actually say that to me at one point, I can't remember the context of the conversation, but we're like, yeah, we're really detailed about how we work. And I said, yeah, Zach's that way too. So I think you guys are going to get along pretty well. <laughs> um, we have a great question from Amanda Taylor. Uh, I love the concept of taking this into a rainstorm to appreciate living once again. What inspired that concept of the rain in the short? Sure. I I knew I wanted to do a Fountain of Youth story. And and as I was as thinking about that, I was trying to think of, of what would be an interesting interesting way of doing that and, and like you said Amy I guess I have a thing for for rain and puddles and such um but there's a few uh, questions about that here too so yeah I bet, I bet there are yeah this is the sequel uh, or the prequel maybe I don't know um uh I guess for for me growing up in the midwest rain is is this very kind of joyful thing when I was a kid playing in the rain that's where puddles came from it's this this very youthful activity for me anyways. Um, I know it's a little bit different for people here in LA, um, but uh, for me growing up, it was, it was such a joy to go out and to play in the rain. And so when thinking about uh, water mechanisms as this fountain of youth, the rain just felt like this perfect fit in that um, it makes you feel like a kid again. And so using that to inspire the actual transition of the characters um, felt perfect. And then it also felt really good to me to have that be this night of, of, of passion and rediscovery for this couple who are just out there being kids together and, and getting to be themselves again. And that's why the short is called Us Again. Is it's, it's kind of from, from multiple perspectives. It's from Art's perspective and from Dot's perspective in that there's a physical us again, but there's also an emotional us again in that they their relationship is back by the end, that they are back to being who they are emotionally by the end. They are us again at the end. It's not about becoming young, but there's that moment where you go, oh, I guess this is about becoming young again. And it's like, no, it's actually about emotionally being true to who you are and recognizing that world around you. So there's a great question here from Tanya that I don't know the answer to. Are there any Easter eggs in us again? Oh man, uh, there there is a, a lot um, actually, but it, a lot of it is you know we we yes uh, we have we have physical elements from from other films uh, you know as far as the the set dressing and things like that. Um, we also have uh, Fantasia is actually playing um, Rhapsody in Blue, which is one of the big uh, inspirations. Uh, for, for us again is actually playing on the movie screen in the background during one of the montage shots. It goes by very, very quickly. Um, but I wanted to kind of have a tip of the hat to that film uh, in there. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Brad, you're gonna have to help me. I know there's set dressing in the apartment uh, from our, our other films. I'm pretty sure there's a tangled uh, like Stein uh, that we got as a crew gift that's sitting <laughs> on a shelf somewhere. Um, 
And then a, a lot of the decoration within the apartment is, is, is very specific, not necessarily Disney Easter eggs, but, but very specific in design. I think you, I think you got most of them. Yep. Isn't that, a, isn't that the pier at the end too? Yeah, we, we referenced the Santa Monica Pier a lot um, for, for that, as well as, um, you know, looking at places like, like Seattle that has kind of a, a big pier with a big um, uh, Ferris wheel and things like that. And so we wanted it to be evocative of, uh, but not necessarily a replication of any of those places. Yeah, this is, I was curious about this because I thought I caught some Easter eggs. I was like, wait, I think that here looks like this or that. Uh, so I'm here also interviewing you. So. <laughs> I think I think the pier was original. I think we actually had, okay. that. and we, we did it like three times because we were like, how would this look like, how would this be like that? And so, yeah, I remember right. that. It's a beautiful short too. Do you want to talk at all about sort of the lighting choices and, and the animation choices just visually? Um, some of the things you brought to this film. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, from from the beginning, you know, thinking about it as as this this dance number, we always we knew it, we wanted it to feel um, theatrical, um, and so I knew, you know, thematically, I wanted everything to have a a then and now feel to it. Like Brad said about the music, we wanted that soul funk feel to be something that is reminiscent of the 60s, you know, a time that the art and dot would have grown up, but also to try to modernize it. Um, we wanted that in the lighting as well. From the beginning, I wanted as much as much neon lighting as, as possible because I wanted something that that felt retro, but but also felt kind of kind of modern. There's lots of incredible shows like, you know, in, Insecure or um, or tons of other shows that are doing this, this really beautiful lighting using color lots of like very large colored lights that feel reminiscent of music videos and things like that as well and so we wanted to kind of feel find this very happy place which I think we found um, cinematically where it feels kind of like a music video but kind of old and kind of new and and try to find that that sweet spot. I'm gonna try and squeeze in two more questions here. Yeah. So a quick one from Tessa, how does it feel to be a part of a Disney short, the first Disney short in five years? How does it feel to direct that? Uh, it's insane. Um, it's, it was, it, I, I cried the day that I got the opportunity. I, I cried many, many times throughout this, just kind of being blown away by, by the privilege of it and, and the team that you get to work with. Um, across the board, not just the amazing people on the screen, but, you know, there's, you know, hundred or so people that worked on this film and they're, they're all incredibly talented and to, to get to, to get to see all of those people work and to get to kind of uh, direct where they go is, it, it's, it's amazing, you know, and, and to be attached to a movie like Raya and the Last Dragon, um, it's, it's crazy. Uh, I can't, I don't know a better word to say because it's just been, it's been overwhelming for, for two years, which is weird that it doesn't get old, but it's still every day. It's like, I can't believe this is, this is happening. I can't believe that I'm on screen with Keone and Mari, you know, it's like the whole, the whole way it's like, what is happening? Um, and, and to be the first one in five years is, uh, it's amazing because there's a huge legacy of, of incredible short films from the studio. And so, it's a real privilege and an honor to to get to put our our little film up there on the on the shelf with all the rest of them. Yeah, gratitude is the one word I would answer that with. Just incredible gratitude and and thanks for being given the privilege and opportunity to do it. Yeah. And so it's faster. One say. last question. <laughs> one last question for all of you. Um, we can start with Keone and Mari. Um, what do you hope people take away from the short when they see it? Oh man, um, I know this may be simple, oversimplifying it, but it can be sometimes a good thing. Um, just, you know, love and, and being present with each other. I think there's so much power. You know, the other day we were walking and uh, walking our dogs and there was this, uh, this old couple in front of us who was matching and um, just, I don't know, that's, that hashtag couple goals feeling that when you're watching them walk across the street and Mara and I feeling that joy and that just that that love and that warmth and um, I hope that people can take that away because I know it's you know it's it's still a tough time for people and um, I hope that 
you know, all we hope to do as artists is to bring some sort of joy and warmth to people and, and somehow inspire their day. And um, yeah, we hope that people can take that away. And, and, um, and for us as personally, for, for dance to represent, uh, to represent dance in a way that um, people haven't seen yet, so yeah. Laurie? Um, yeah, I, I think this is something that Zach said of just like uh, realizing what's important that, you know, I think great art stays with you after you, you see it or you experience it, like it just follows you home and it has a little bit of a <laughs> thing that is reminding you or telling you some kind of truth. And I hope that people feel that and that they would, you know, just do simple things like, oh, I'm going to cuddle my dog for 10 minutes. And I'm just gonna enjoy that, like whatever that that source of of love and presence that you know you kind of brush to the side every day that you would take the time to do it and, and feel that, um, yeah. Brad, man, they summed it up pretty well. Um, <laughs> I think I think overall it's it's being present and and exactly what they said, you know, uh, really also being grateful and thankful for the love the loved ones you have, I think that often we, we take them for granted, frankly, that we will, well, they'll, they'll be there with us, I think. And we're living through a moment in time when that's, you know, that's something that we shouldn't take for granted. We really should love who we're with and, and tell them that and care for them and, and enjoy every moment that we have. And Zach, take us home. Yeah, I mean, I think, I think these guys have, have said it so well. Um, there's a few other like small, you know, hopeful takeaways that we kind of, we wanted throughout. And I think, you know, Brad, Brad started to touch on it there. Um, you know, I, I said from the beginning to my wife that I hope when people watch this film, they look at their grandparents and realize that they were kids once too. Mm -hmm. And they, it inspires them to ask questions, you know, because that is something that I feel like I missed out on because I wasn't self-aware enough, I guess, um, to ask those questions while my grandparents were still around. And so I hope that inspires conversations between, between generations about their lived experiences and their views on life and their views on their relationships. So um, that's a very subtle one, but, but hopefully people you know, think about their families differently. Thank you so much. Well, I wanna thank all five of you uh, for being hi, uh, <laughs> for being part of this press conference today. You can watch us again in theaters with Raya and the Last Dragon March 5th and on Disney Plus in June. Thank you all again so much. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Thank you all. <laughs>